In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does continue our series in the book of Daniel. And one thing that I wanted to mention real quickly before we get into it is that once again, Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream and he needs somebody to interpret that dream. And so he goes to his magicians and his magicians can't tell him. So he goes really where he should have gone to begin with to Daniel, the chief of his magicians, the person that he knows can interpret dreams because he's had his dreams interpreted by Daniel before. And so let's look at how this plays out in this verse in the book of Daniel 4, verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name is Belteshazzar, was appalled for a while as his thoughts alarmed him. The king responded and said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation alarm you. Belteshazzar replied, My lord, if only the dream applied to those who hate you and its interpretations to you and your adversaries. You see, we'll talk a little bit more about the content of the dream itself probably tomorrow. But what's going on here is that Daniel is living in a time where killing the messenger was not something that was seen as taboo. If a king didn't like what you said, if a king thought that you were bringing him unfavorable news, they could kill you and very often did. Even in Israel, a place where obviously that would have been frowned upon killing one of God's prophets. Even in Israel, it was not that uncommon for prophets to be killed by those in power. Actually killed by people who didn't like what they were saying, didn't like the message. You can fast forward, and that was true even in the New Testament years later. You remember what happened to John the Baptist with Herod. And so Daniel understands that even though this is going to be something that Nebuchadnezzar is going to hear and really not like, he understands that this interpretation is going to be something that is dangerous for him to say because of how powerful Nebuchadnezzar is. He's afraid of what's going to happen to him because he tells him this interpretation and what it means because it's going to be unflattering to him. And yet, even though Daniel's afraid, you're about to see that he tells the truth because Daniel has too much respect for the truth to lie. He has too much respect for God's word. And another thing that I think Daniel may have thought about as well, and it doesn't say this in the scripture, I'm not trying to get inside Daniel's head, but maybe one thing that he considered, and I hope that he did, is if God sent this man this dream, and I'm here and he knows that I can interpret dreams, then regardless of what happens to me, God wants this man to have this information. And I'm God's mouthpiece, I'm his prophet, and so because of that, I'm supposed to tell him what the dream means. If God put me in this situation, then I'm supposed to be honest and tell him the truth and not worry so much about my own safety because this is obviously a message that God wants to get to Nebuchadnezzar. And so not only did he see it from the perspective of, I respect the truth, therefore I'm going to do this. He also, I think, saw it from the perspective of, God wants him to have this message and I'm going to do what God asks of me. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.